We've been speaking to a number of managers today, Jürgen. And obviously, we've been asking about the Newcastle takeover. I just wanted to get your thoughts on it and, and I suppose what kind of impact you think it might have on, on the competition as a whole long term. Um, yeah, I, I actually was waiting for um, some official statements about it, like from Richard Masters or somebody else. So, but we, because we all know there are obviously concerns about human rights issues, I think that's all clear that we all think the same there. So, didn't happen in the first place. Happening then, um, still that's the the situation. Um, what will it mean for football? That's um a few months ago I think we had a massive we had a massive argument uh, argument issue I would say the whole football world with 12 clubs or so um, trying to to build a super league um, and rightly so um, didn't happen but it these kind this is kind of a, a creating a super team if you want it's pretty much the same guaranteed spots in the Champions League not um, in a few years time not immediately um, all these kind of things um, yeah with all the how how f f uh, financial fair play is is um, used nowadays well nobody knows exactly if, if, is, the, is it still existing or not stuff like this so it's like it is so um, everybody knows that Newcastle fans will love it of course but um, for the rest of it, it just means there's there's a new superpower in Newcastle. I cannot avoid that. Money cannot buy everything, but can um, over the time. That will take time, but over time they they will have they have enough money to make a few wrong decisions, to make then the right decisions, and then they will be where they want to be. So that's how it is. I don't think that's to avoid in the in the in the long term, but. That's the situation. Everybody knows that, and obviously, the Premier League or Richard Masters thought, "Yeah, let's give it a go." I, I, I don't know it, but it's not the first time. It's, it's just the third, as far as I know, the third club, who is not owned by a country. So I'm not sure how many countries are still out there to to have the the financial power and the interest to do so. But this is how it is, and that's how what everybody has to deal with. For yourself, Jürgen, obviously we've got the situation regarding Fabinho and Allison. What is their availability going to be for this weekend, or is it a case of them going straight to Madrid? What is what is the plan for them, and what frustration is there that there's not been a better solution to this? Well, the problem with these answers is always that when you when um, somebody of you writes it, then then it sounds like I'm um, if I use the word frustration, um, then oh my god, club is frustrated about that. I'm not. I'm I'm, I'm just. <sighs> It, it's, we have no chance, obviously. Somebody decided to give um, Brazil the opportunity to play last night, so like a few hours ago. Then somebody made a decision that we have to play on Saturday 12.30. So it's all not in our hands. If we say something, then always the same people say the same stuff. Yeah, that's why you have a big squad. That, that's all clear, but you have a big squad not for issues you have with um, um, Football associations, because they put in tournaments. It's not like, oh, well, five players have to play there and four players have to play there, but then you have still a league game to play. So, uh, how you maybe know, Atletico is not playing at the weekend. Um, our next opponent in the Champions League, so something like that would never happen here. <laughs> and if it would happen, then it would be like, oh my God, how can they do it for them and stuff like this. So, we know it for a while. We made our decision a while ago. We had to sort obviously quarantine issues and all these kind of things and we the this decision we made is the boys will not be here they will go directly to madrid wait there for us be able to play hopefully then <laughs> at, against atletico um will come slightly later back than us 10 days over then and then they can come back and are the normal in our normal um uh, procedure again and that's it and Trent and Diogo, they definitely available this weekend. And, and how long will it be before Thiago is uh, is available to you again? Uh, yes, Trent and Diogo are available. Um, at least they were yesterday. So um, and Thiago, I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah, it still takes a little bit of time. It's uh, that's a bit disappointing, but we know that as well for for a few days now that it will not get, go that quick. Um, and yeah, we have to wait. Hope you're feeling Thanks, Jürgen, all the best. Hope you're feeling Thank better. You. Speak to you soon. Uh, right, we'll go to Steve Wyeth, PLP for two. Are you still on mute there, Steve? If you'd like to take yourself off, off the mute, and then we can uh, hear your question. Apologies. Hi there, Jürgen. Hi. Uh, 
Can I go back to the the situation with the potential new player challenging at the top of the Premier League? Is it is it as straightforward as as money, or are there other factors that that could turn a club into to one that can challenge at the top? Of course, to push. It's all, much more important than money is obviously good decisions. It was always possible, will always be possible, it's just more difficult. It's not, I'm, I'm not concerned about that, I'd only describe the situation. So it was before we won the Champions League two years ago or whenever it was, um, and, and there were already two countries involved in the tournament So and with brilliant teams. So football is a wonderful game, you can still win football games even when the, the financial power of the, of the opponent is much much bigger than your own, whoever that will be. And um, that's not, that's, honestly, I, I'm really not concerned. It's just, we have, you all know it. It's just, you need our voices, obviously. That's why you ask all the Premier League managers now, what they do they say, but you know it already. It will not happen overnight. Um, and uh, Newcastle is not safe in the league now this year. So maybe that is a, I don't say that, but it's not 100% sure that they will stay in the league. Um, that would um, slow down the, the process a little bit for sure. Uh, but. We all know there are out, that out there. There are some people who, um, who, who the football knowledge is big enough. I think there will be a lot of changes in the next few years. Try with them, then do that, and all these kind of things. It's 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 a massive project. Uh, yeah, but it's football still, and so you, of course you can win football games against them in the future as well. But it's how is that? It's it's clear, and we all know it. In five, six, seven years' time, Newcastle, if the owners are patient enough is a new superpower or an old superpower because they were already really successful in the past um, and the the new owners of new cars would have obviously enough money to buy the whole league so maybe they fancy that at one point and then it opens up again um, same chances for everybody um, we will see will, will you have a premier league game to win tomorrow against Watford? thank you for mentioning that <laughs> But you are facing a team with with a new manager. Were you surprised that they made a change? And, and how can you, can you be imagine? surprised that Watford makes a change? To be honest, so I respect all football teams. I respect Claudio Ranieri a lot, but it's really, it's really from a. So my own situation as a football manager, it's really harsh how Watford is dealing with its managers. To be honest, that's that's uh, I I don't understand that. So it's it's just like that. The, it's pretty much you learn the name of the new colleague and then he's already gone again. So that's pretty much how it is. And um, I, I don't like that and I have to say that. But that doesn't mean I have no problem with Claudio at, at all. It's obviously the opposite. I like him a lot and he's a really calm and relaxed guy. But how can you be surprised that Watford makes a change? They, they make that. I'm six years in the country. I don't know how many managers I faced already in, in, the, in the Watford dog out. Uh, but now it's Claudio. And yeah. I'm sorry, I, I stepped in your question, but you probably it makes it more difficult. Obviously, it's um, we used more um, pictures and 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 situations from Sampdoria Genoa. Now, obviously, where where Claudio played um, coached the last time, and um, so we know about him. Obviously, we faced him a couple of times. I know him for a long time, and yeah, so we we have to be flexible let me say like this but when, if, when we prepare an opponent we always we always start with focusing really on us and this time we have to do that even more so because we don't know a lot about the opponent and um, we have to play our game and there will be no excuses in the end we will try just try to play a really good football game and if we play really good then we are difficult to play whoever is in a dugout whoever is on the pitch from the other side that's how it is and that's what we try to do Okay. Thank you, Steve. We'll go to Juliet for one, and then to James from Talksport for one, and then James from uh, BBC Merseyside for one. Juliet. And Jürgen, just keeping on with uh, Claire Uranieri, he spoke this week about how his brain is forever young, um, and you know, the fact that he loves he loves being in football management, and he's going to be obviously um, um, the eldest Premier League manager, I think, again now after you know Roy Hodgson has gone, and he said that he can keep managing till he's eighty. I know that you say you never, you know, you don't see yourself, you know, managing as well or down the line as they do at that age. But the fact that he says his brain is forever young, is your brain forever young? I hope so. First of all, congratulations to Claudio that he's uh, now 69. And I see myself here in the, uh, on, on the screen. He looks younger than me. So um, obviously he has a quite a good, um, yeah, 
genetic basis and on the other side that's all a decision it's a personal decision um, just how you do it when you are lucky enough that you can make the decision he had obviously i don't know exactly but more than 15 clubs probably does some, anybody know the exact number so more definitely more clubs than i can ever have because i'm now already 54 i'm not sure i can catch up in the next 15 years with him um and that's that's the situation so yes i hope very much so that i'm um with 79 89 still in the same shape like m at least like um claudio is now or as i'm now but we all don't know that and so we have to use the time in our hands in the moment and not think too much about what will happen in 15 years time fantastic james from Talksport for one see if you can answer the claudio ranieri question for his james I think it's something like 21 clubs in 35 years. Well, so I think uh, a, lot, a lot of catching up to do. Yeah, yeah. that's what I said. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to ask you about the fact that you spent most of your analysis looking at Claudio at Sampdoria rather than, than necessarily Watford this season. What have you learned from that analysis and how much impact, impact do you think he'll have been able to have in the 10 or so days he's had at Watford? Look, when you look at the last game against Leeds, when when they lost, um, obviously Watford had a had a good idea about the game. So we all know Leeds playing man marking and um, and Watford um, tried to build up with football, having a wide formation, stuff like this. That's all. That's good. That's actually what you have to do. The only problem is when you lose the ball, then um, the opponent has space, more space for a counter attack, stuff like this. That's what Leeds used, and that's why they won. Um, and I heard, of course, not. Everything what Claudio said last week, I guess, but um, some pieces. Um, and he said we have to close the spaces. We have to be more compact. That's how it is, and we have to use the speed we have in our squad. So, do we know exactly which system they play? No, some Tori, I four for two probably. Um, um, Watford started in a four three three in the season, but then four two three one stuff like this. So, we don't know that exactly, but yeah. When you come, I've, it's six years ago that I came new in a club during the season. But what I tried to do is giving some stability. So that's of course you have to, to. You don't start with telling the players which about twenty different patterns offensively. You want to make them compact and defending well, and that's always the basis for winning a football game. And that's what we expect, obviously. Um, and that's what we have to deal with. And in the end, if it's completely different, we have to deal with that. I'm not. I don't have a. a what is that? The crystal ball and can also say what they do definitely so we have to guess a little bit but with the things we know we think we are we will be close at least to what will happen and that's what we try to use fantastic thank you james uh we go to james mountford from uh, bbc and then carl apologies to the other hands up in the uh in the open section we do have a embargo section so i can't take every hand that's up but james followed by carl thanks matt i make it 21 clubs by the way so did james so there you go, yes, yes. I you, think you, to you, be you're, correct. You're affirming his information, so lovely. That's two sources. We're good to go. <laughs> yeah, again, I just wondered if I could ask you about um, some personnel in defence, please. Um, Joe Gomez, clearly he's come back from a, a serious injury last season, but but how is he progressing and, and what does he need to do to get into the starting eleven more consistently? Nothing special. He's in a top shape. He's really good. Um, I, I know that... Um, Garrett from time to time reacts on the things that if a player is not playing regularly in the club, then he's not playing for the national team. Obviously, that's a special rule for Mitter Stones. Um, and um, but Joe didn't get call up stuff like this would have helped him to have some games. Uh, he, I, I really think he's an absolute exceptional, exceptional centre half. But very good for us in the moment. We have five exceptional centre halves, um, and Nate Phillips is not making the squad most of the time because the numbers we can only involve but he trains exceptional as well Ibu and and Joe do that as well so Joey has nothing dif to do differently it's just to continue working and then then Tybal, um that all, everything will be fine 100 percent we need the boys over the year it's still it's still early in the season stuff like this you need to get settled you need to find rhythm all these kind of things changing then every week makes not too much sense it was always clear we last year taught us obviously we had we need we need at least four and a half but when they're all when they're then all healthy then we get these questions when they are when when we have only three and two of them are not healthy then we have other questions so we that's how you build a squad especially when you had the situation we had last year so that's now not every week perfectly comfortable for the players but 
it's a situation and deal really well with it. The boys know um, time will come for them and the quality they have is outstanding. And so it's for me in the moment a very, very good situation. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Just before I go to Karl Markham, if I could have hands up from the dailies again, I won't be able to take all of you, but I'll take the first three or four who shut their hand up. But uh, Karl, to conclude the open section of the press conference. Hi, Jürgen. Can I just clarify the the quarantine situation with you say Fab and Alison are going to Spain, but then you're saying they're coming back slightly later. What's what's the rationale for that? You mean the Q they're coming back slightly later after you you're coming they back? They have to. They have to. It's because they went Thursday. to Colombia, wasn't it? I had it because the, the, the last game they played in a red disc country was Colombia. Don't ask me now exactly which day, but next Thursday or Wednesday to Thursday at midnight or one past midnight. Uh, then it's it's ten days, and from that moment on, they can come back. These are these are the rules in the moment. We cannot change that. And um, the thing is that um, if they would, if we would have obviously they could have flown in to to to, to England um, with all the quarantine stuff. Then then following up with that, um, that would have been would have meant that they have to isolate from their families and stuff like this. And Ali has three kids. That's not a real being already 12 days away with the national teams. Then again, 10 days in isolation. Then um, two weeks here, the same rubbish again. So we need solutions for that. And they are still not there. Um, it's, it's for us. We, how is that? I know always when we mention these kind of things, then you all go for it and say, yeah, but why do, shall, shall they be treated differently? Tell me now people who get every, all the, every two weeks for three weeks away from the family. It makes all no sense, but it's not in our hands. We just we get the information, try to find a solution and take the solution. I don't think it happened uh, a lot of times before that players are not available for federation reasons because the federations, which is, by the way, the federation of the Yes, the countries, but then go down to the clubs and stuff like this. It's like, okay, we ask, we ask only for a few hours that would have made it a little bit more likely that they could have played because bringing them for 12, 30 is no chance to play. There's no chance for them. Um, but if we would have played, for example, seven o'clock or whatever, or um, then we would have probably tried it. But so it makes no sense. But neither Watford nor the Premier League was open to that thing because obviously <laughs> That's uh, their understanding of fair competition, but it's how it is. It, as I said, we know it already for a while, and um, we now we deal with it. And I don't I explain it now to you, but it's not. Um, I, I, we didn't make the decision yesterday. We make it. We made it a bit earlier, so we knew about it, and now we we know how to deal with the situation. By the way, when we talk about federation, Curtis Jones came back injured from the U21s. So great, yeah. So that, that's that's not okay as well. But we, it's really difficult to get proper in contact with even with the English Federation because they just do what they want. Um, didn't train, didn't was not involved in the first game. They didn't do a scan or whatever. Then he um, played a few minutes in the second game. What was the opponent? Second U21 games? Andorra. Andorra, great. Um, very important that he played there. Uh, came back, slight, slight injury, not available for tomorrow. So these are the situations we have to deal with. And that's why we have these massive squads and can just use players like machines. So you are not available and we take you and stuff like this. I said it before, but when, 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 when the federations don't start helping us, and I mean with them, all of them, whoever it is, the Premier League, the FA, they, they, they have to think about the game again and not only about their own interests. And that's how it is in the moment. But we can talk about that. Five, I, I'm six years here and probably seven years I talk about it. And it's just, it's, it's, it's always the thing, oh, why did we talk about it? Oh, it makes no sense. So, uh, because nobody obviously is listening, um, and that's it. Super Thank data. you. I only asked about his quarantine stage. <laughs> Thank you for that. Thank um, you, Carl. Could you just, well, so, just well. to clarify, then, they are basically be doing their quarantine in Spain. So, when they come back, it will be normal for them. Spain and Brazil. Exactly. Yeah. They had all. They have played the last game in Brazil, so they were. Let I don't fix me now on on experience, but let me say they had already four days there, um, not in a red list country. That's what counts, and then another six days in a not red list country, so then they can come back and start immediately with us. So even when they go from bubble to bubble to bubble, um, it's still ten days, and that's fine. Uh, that's for us the solution now, and yeah, that's it.